Go, 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 go. Folks, welcome back to another episode of The Fallen Badge. Today, the murder of Officer Jason Ellis, Bardstown Police Department, Kentucky. Folks, Officer Ellis was 33 years old. He had seven years with the Bardstown Police Department. Now, he was married, he had two sons, Mama, bonus daddy, and two sisters. Now this is a rarity in a homicide of a police officer case. It's unsolved. Most officers that get killed, the reason the case gets solved is usually you got dash cam or you got body cam or they're sent on a call, you got witnesses, all kinds of things. In this case here, you you don't have any of it. There's a $200,000 reward for information leads to the apprehension of the suspects responsible. Now, it's May 25th, 2013. About 2 o'clock in the morning, Officer Ellis, he's getting ready to head home. Now, he's a canine officer, but they're going to keep his squad car and get it repainted. So... His car is going to stay there at the station and his dog is going to stay in the kennels there at the station. So he's going to drive a replacement vehicle to get home. It's a marked squad car. So now he tells the dispatcher he's off duty and she acknowledges that. Now his normal route home, he's going to head down Stephen Foster Avenue. He's going to pass the Walmart and the Cracker Barrel. He's going to hit the overpass, take a left turn, and he's going to get on eastbound Bluegrass Parkway. Now, it'll take him about 10 minutes, and he's going to hit exit 34. Now, that's for Route 55. That's towards Springfield and Bloomfield. Now, this particular exit, when you get off on it, it's one of those where it takes a big, long turn. And if you're not careful, you're going to misjudge how sharp that curve is. Now, on either side of this ramp, you've got steep, rocky little cliffs. They're probably, I don't know, 20 feet above the roadway, 25 feet. No street lights, no cameras, nothing. Now, this squad car he's in, it does not have a dash cam, and he's not wearing a body camera because that's going to stay at the station. So you now he gets there to exit 34, and he starts to get on the ramp. Now, as he's making that sharp turn, that big old curve, there's a pile of debris in the middle of the roadway. Now, that debris is right there where the two yellow caution reflective signs are, one on each side of the road. So now Officer Ellis, he stops his cruiser, puts the overhead lights on, and he gets out and he's gonna move that debris off the ramp. Now he is in full uniform, and the overhead lights both should tell anyone that's in the area that this is the police. So now he walks up to the debris, because it's limbs and branches and whatnot. He gets him a double handful of some of that greenery and he's gonna throw it off to the side of the road. Now there's hedges and bushes up on both of these hills, even down below it. So he turns, he's going to walk off the roadway with his first handful of debris and a single 12-gauge shotgun round strikes his body. Now it hits his vest, hits his arms, neck, and then he falls there on the roadway. Now this second shot that's fired, it's a different size and type of pellets than the first one. Now I don't know if that tells us that the shooter has got different rounds in his shotgun or if it's more than one shooter. And he's hitting the upper arms, the forearm, 
shatters his right elbow. Now, I don't know if it was number six shot or number seven shot or exactly what, but what little I know from the investigation resource material indicates it was probably number six or number seven shot. Now, some of these rounds also hit him in the scalp, the forehead, and the temple. One hits him in the jaw. So it's about 2.30 in the morning, and he's falling down onto the pavement. And when he falls, those limbs and debris he's carrying, they fall on his legs, and his hands and arms fall to his side. And the blood trail from just his arm is four foot wide of blood. Now, it's about 2.36 in the morning when two cars pull up, and they're trying to get off there on that same exit. Now, they don't see the officer down because he's in front of the car. So they're sitting there for a few minutes. And finally, the fellow in the second car, he walks up to the first car and wants to know, is anybody out there? Where's the officer? Said they don't know. So he walks up there and looks at the squad car, and he sees it's a Bardstown police officer. Now, this fella, he works there in town. So he looks over the car and he goes around to the front and he sees that Officer Ellis is down on the roadway. Now he runs back and he tells the people in that car that they need to get on the police radio and let them know that there's an officer down. Now that fella, he runs back up to the car and he's trying to get a pulse on Officer Ellis, but he can't find one. Now the female that's in that first car that had pulled up, she's a little under the weather from drinking, but she gets to the police radio and she hollers out that there's an officer down. She says that a couple of times. She says it's on Bloomfield Road. Hello, hello. Officer down, officer down, Bloomfield Road. I mean, is this going to be a car accident? Is there another vehicle involved or is it just one vehicle versus a tree or what? We, we, I, I've come home from Heaven Hill Distillery. I've just got off work, and there was a, the police car is sitting in the middle of the road with the lights on, and I, we didn't know what it was. It's a tree across the road, and I, I, I didn't know what it was, and I got out, and I went up there and looked, and it's him. I believe somebody's hit him. Okay, can you tell if he is breathing? No, sir, he is not breathing. Body temperature is cold. I came down Bloomfield Road, which is 62, and then we cut across 55 over top of the bluegrass. And so we actually came down the exit backwards. And the only thing I could see at first, right as soon as I was crossing the bluegrass, I could see the reflection of his lights on the exit ramp. That's the only way I knew that they were actually on the ramp. Because from either end of the exit, you couldn't see anything. I just barely saw his lights hit the trees. <sighs> Pulled down the ramp. Got as close to him as I could with all the with those tree branches that were still in the roadway when I got there. A couple people were standing out of their cars. Uh, Mr. Monroe was down on the ground beside him. I ran up to him and started doing what I could that I thought could help and then EMS was there it seemed like almost instantly and there's nothing else to do she finally tells the dispatcher old Bloomfield Road by the Y so the dispatcher he calls and he's got a couple of cars so they head that way now the dispatcher asks this woman is the officer okay what happened they don't know. Now, they're originally thinking the woman is that maybe the officer got hit by a car. Now, the Kentucky State Police are handling the investigation. And from the beginning, it's pretty obvious that Officer Ellis was murdered. It's just a matter of, was this an ambush from the beginning or what? Because they don't know if he had stopped a motorist or stopped to help a motorist and they'd killed him or if somebody had put debris down there on the road to get him to stop. Now, they do know that the shooter was on top of one of them hills on either side, don't know which. So now, if they're going after Officer Ellis specifically, 
It's one of two things. Either somebody told them his route to go home, or they were conducting surveillance, or both. Because they wouldn't know what time he was going to get off, necessarily. So that might involve somebody watching the station to see when he leaves. And then using the cell phone or little radios or something to communicate to let them know he's on his way for them to put that debris down there because you can't put that debris down too soon because you don't want a bunch of cars stopped. Now, it's been 11 years, case unsolved. There's a lot of talk that some of the criminal element in the county there, for whatever reason, decided to bump off Officer Ellis. I don't know what exactly it's about. I've read some stuff that indicated it might be a burglary ring or a dope ring or something. But whatever it is, there's probably more than one person involved. And the fact nothing's come out about it, this case hadn't been solved, that means the people that did it hadn't been talking. Either that or some of the people that knew about this killing, they got bumped off. Now, that particular area, they've had some homicides since Officer Ellis and there's a lot of talk that maybe these homicides are all connected in some way. Now the FBI has been out that way just back in December of 2023 FBI and the Kentucky State Police were out digging digging out in the woods around some houses and structures out there off of Thompson Hill Road in Cox Creek now, that's just south of Mount Washington near the Nelson and Bullock County lines. Now, they have out there with backhoes and all kinds of excavation equipment. So they found out something about something. Now, what they would not disclose is exactly what they're looking for and which homicide, because they got three that they're, they're trying to solve. One of them's Officer Ellis. One of them's... A, lady named Crystal Rogers and another one's the father of the Rogers woman, Tommy Ballard. Now her body's still missing. Mr. Ballard was shot and killed on a hunting trip about a year after his daughter disappeared. Officer Jason Scott Ellis. End of watch, May 25th, 2013.